Like me, whenever you connect to a database, most of the times what happens is you got to run a couple of commands to make sure if database is running fine or not. For example, whenever I connect to a database, I tend to run this command called select name comma open mode from v dollar database because I always make sure whichever database I connect, I am connected to the right database and I am running the right commands on the right database. Tell me frankly how many times you ran a command on a wrong database assuming that you connected to a right database. Happens, right? Actually it happened with me last week also. Now assume that whenever you connect to a database you want to check which database you are connected and you want to check whether the database is running in archive log mode or not and also you want to check a couple of other things like it might be your habit of checking six or seven things whenever you are connected to a database. Happens with me also because as a DBA we have to make sure that we are connected to the right database and we are running the right commands. Assume that every time you connect to a database you run six or seven fixed commands against every database. In your environment you have more than 30 to 50 databases. Every time you connect to a database, you run those seven or eight commands, right? Assume while connected to those 30 databases, every time you're running those seven to eight commands, how much time you're wasting in running those commands. So manual typing effort and every time you connect to the database, you type the same commands just to be doubly sure before you execute something on the database, right? This actually becomes a big problem when you have more number of databases in an environment. Let's take 100, 200 databases. Now, how can we overcome this kind of problem like you connecting to a database and every time trying to manually type those queries or commands or running some packages just to make sure like you're connected to the right database. There should be a great way to work on this, right? There should be a better way to actually automate this kind of process. All right guys, so I'm connected to a server and over here, let us try to create our first SQL script that will help us run our fixed commands against a database to simplify our life. What I'll do is I'll quickly create a script under slash TMP and SQL underscore script dot SQL. This is the file. What I'll do is I will write all the SQL queries that I generally run against the database in this file. So the first command I generally run is select name comma open underscore mode from v dollar database, right? This is the first command. The next command I generally run is archive log list and let us for now save this file you can actually add all of the commands that you run against the database into this script file. Let us look at how do we run this script file inside the SQL plus. I will connect to SQL plus slash ssdba and you can simply type at slash tmp slash sql underscore script dot sql. As you hit enter, what happens? The SQL plus will run through the script file that you have created and it will execute all the queries that you placed into this SQL script file one by one and it gives you the exact output. That looks very simple, right? But there is one problem with this kind of approach. You created a script that is under slash TMP location and you have to always call that script manually at least you have to invoke the SQL plus in order to run the script, right? Let us look at the other way that we can run the script without getting inside the SQL plus. You simply type SQL plus slash ssdba and give the location of the script with at symbol slash tmp slash sql underscore script dot sql. This is our script file. Hit enter. Now what happens? SQL plus is connected along with the script file is automatically executed for you. Whatever scripts or SQL commands you place under the script file, they are first executed and then the SQL plus is invoked. Guys, still we saw two methods of executing a stored SQL script 
but the problem is both the methods of executing the scripts are manual you got to manually run the scripts why not there could be a better way to execute the scripts automatically whenever you try to connect to a database right because otherwise every time you connect to a server and then you connect to a database you got to remember where the script file is stored what is the name of the script file and then manually run the script again we are back to square one the problem remains same earlier we had to execute couple of commands on all the databases now we store all those commands into multiple scripts and then we have to remember the script file script location and run the scripts manually what's the other way to solve this problem and automate actually oracle provides you with a glogin.sql file that is known as global login file this sql file you can put all the scripts commands packages whatever you want to run inside oracle before connecting to sql plus you put everything in this one file and whenever you invoke sql plus automatically all the scripts placed under glogin.sql file will be executed one by one first of all let us look at what is the location of the glogin file let me check the environment variables so the glogin file resides under oracle underscore home slash sql plus and if you do ls hyphen lrt you can see this admin let's get into admin and ls hyphen lrt this is the file glogin.sql so what you have to do is put all your commands that you want to execute within sql plus into this glogin file so i'll invoke this file glogin.sql and you can read it these are the comments so it says glogin.sql add any sql star plus commands here that are to be executed when a user starts sql plus session what you have to do is go to the end of the file and start writing your queries so i will write in select name comma open underscore mode from v dollar database this is the first query i want to execute the next query i want to execute is archive log list and then select name from v dollar data file select name from v dollar control file that's it these are the commands i want to run whenever i connect to sql plus now see the beauty guys wherever you are in the system if you just invoke the sql plus this glogin file is automatically executed by oracle and you have output of all the queries that you have placed in the glogin file the beauty you are not executing the script file manually and anything that you place in the glogin file will be executed for any user who invokes sql plus on this server all right that was awesome right you put all the commands that you want to run under glogin.sql file and whenever you invoke the sql star plus automatically oracle will read the glogin file and it will execute all the queries that you place under glogin file the best part you don't have to remember the script file name and location like the previous method and also you can put the plsql packages procedures over there in the glogin file those gets automatically executed whenever any user invokes the sql plus on the respective server pretty simple straightforward and imagine this guys you have an environment where you have 500 databases and on every database you just Uh, update the glogin.sql file by putting whatever the respective commands that you want to run against the database so that whenever you connect to the database you have a snapshot of the output and you can quickly understand okay this is the database i'm connected this is the archive log mode so on and so forth i hope guys this helps you and you guys also start using glogin.sql in your environment it literally simplifies your life and you would feel the benefit of the glogin.sql when you connect to a database and suddenly you see the output like the key queries that you want to run you have the output right there and that makes you or that allows you to decide that you are connected to a right database and everything is perfect 
All right guys, now that you know the power of glogin.sql, imagine this, you connect to a standby database and automatically you have the queries that show you whether the standby is in sync or not. Simplifies your life, right? Imagine this, you connect to a production database and you have the queries inside the glogin.sql that tells you that production database space requirements, the health checkups, the archive destination space, and you get all those important uh, information right in one shot whenever you connect to SQL Plus. It simplifies your life, right? Also, there are many benefits of glogin.sql. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to share with you how I personally use glogin.sql on multiple databases and how you can improvise on glogin.sql into your environment so that you have better control on your database. Let us open the glogin file. I'll go to oracle underscore home slash sql plus slash admin. This is the location where we'll have the glogin file. Open the glogin.sql file and what i'll actually do is i'll delete the last three commands because i don't need it i would love to keep the select name comma open mode from v dollar database because this command is very special at least for me because whenever i connect to a database i would like to know what is the name of the database and what is the mode of the database because if i'm connected to the primary database the primary database mode would be read and write mode and if I'm connected to a standby database, definitely the mode would be mounted, right? The first thing, whenever I connect to a database, I would like to know the name, the open mode of the database. And the next thing, what I would do is guys, let us go to our support website. And if you just type reclaim space, we have an article reclaim unused space in Oracle. So on very critical databases, I would like to know how much space can I save inside the database or how much unused space is there inside Oracle that we can actually release in case if we don't need. So what you can do is if you go down onto this article, this is one of my favorite scripts. When you try to reclaim space from a data file, this script will give you possible saving report like possible amount of space that you can save inside the data files i will put this query into this g login file and also before running this i will make sure set lines triple line so what we have done is we added up the name and open mode. We want to know whenever we connect to the database. The next thing we have added is a script that tells us the possible amount of saving, the space saving that we can have inside the data files of the production database. The next thing I would like to know whenever I connect to a database is the top five resource intensive SQLs, right? So top sorry top resource intensive so we have this article top resource intensive sqls i will add this script also to the g login file because whenever i connect to the database i want to know the top five sql commands that are taking up most of the resources of the oracle database and in the end, I would at least want to know the table space utilization inside the database. So what I'll do is I will add the script for table space utilization. So open this article table space utilization in Oracle and put this entire script into the G login file. That's it. These are the most important information that I want to see whenever I connect to any production database. Let us save the glogin file and simply let us connect to the database SQL plus slash SSDBA, hit enter and now see what happens. So initially we can see that we are connected to test DB, which is in read and write mode. 
and then we have some value you can ignore this value for now this is actually the output of the possible saving report and within this possible saving report i can see i can save 259 mb of space within the data files i mean that's the maximum saving i can have and then we have the sql queries the top five sql commands that are taking highest resources inside the oracle database and at the end i have the table space utilization report so whenever i connect to the database i simply get the most critical information in front of me and depending on these information you can tend to act react or probably improvise the database that was really awesome guys i would want you guys to try the glogin.sql file in your environment put very important queries packages plsql functions procedures anything that you want to run against the oracle database when you start or invoke sql star plus before we wind up there are actually two important files like one is glogin.sql and another one is login.sql file inside oracle I want you guys to find the difference between glogin.sql and login.sql. Also, let me know the difference between both the files below in the comments. <laughs>